Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. No let up in dengue cases in northern India despite winter nearing. US reiterates there is no truth to foreign conspiracy claims by Pakistan's Imran Khan. And Nepal president justifies refusal to sign citizenship bill. And now for all the details. There seems to be no respite from dengue in parts of northern India despite the onset of the winter season as hospitals have been overwhelmed with patients. Most patients survive the vector-borne disease but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 people every year globally. Despite the winter season fast approaching, dengue outbreak has continued to grip parts of northern India while authorities grapple to curb its spread. A municipality official in Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh state said on Thursday that 100 teams, 18 jeep mountain machines, 80 hand fogging machines had been deployed for sanitizing parts of the district. A sudden change in the climate has led to perfect breeding conditions for mosquitoes that has increased the number of people getting infected. A health official said there were about 154 active cases across Kanpur with over 60 patients admitted in hospitals. Dengu ke is samay hamare janpad mein sarkari aur private chikitsaliyon mein kul mila kar ke 61 cases, 61 cases bharti hain. Jis mein government hospital mein hamare 18 cases hain aur private nursing home aur chikitsaliyon mein 43 cases bharti hain. Active cases vartaman mein hamare janpad mein 154 hain. Hospitals in Gorakhpur in Uttar Pradesh also witnessed patients approaching for tests for the vector-borne disease. There are reportedly around 200 cases till now in Gorakhpur. Dengue fever which can cause intense pain in muscles and joints and is spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito generally affects the patient's immunity by making platelet count take a dip while also impacting their liver enzymes. This year the monsoons extended beyond the usual spell which has been a bane to residents living in flood-prone areas as stagnant waters created favorable conditions for diseases like dengue. Moving on, the US has once again dismissed the allegation of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan of aiding his ouster from office with a State Department official asserting that there has been never any truth to it. The sharp response came after Khan recently said he no longer blames Washington over his removal and wants to mend ties. Responding to a question regarding former Pakistan PM Imran Khan's recent remarks on his American conspiracy theory, U.S. Department of State Principal Deputy Spokesperson Vedan Patel yet again dismissed any involvement of Washington in his ouster. In a sharp remark, Patel said there has never been truth in allegations made by Khan. Imran Khan, who had to vacate Prime Minister's office after failing the trust vote in April, had claimed involvement of U.S. State Department official Donald Liu in his removal. But he took a U-turn during an interview after surviving a recent assassination attempt and said he no longer blames U.S. for toppling of his government and wants to mend ties. The U.S. values our long-standing cooperation with Pakistan and has always viewed a prosperous and democratic Pakistan as critical to U.S. interests. That remains unchanged. Uh, and we don't have a position on one political candidate of a party versus another. We support peaceful upholding of democratic 
constitutional and legal principles. And ultimately, we will not let propaganda, misinformation, and disinformation get in the way of any bilateral relationship, including our valued bilateral partner uh, with Pakistan. Post the U-turn in Khan's rhetoric, ruling coalition leaders have accused him of misleading the country and damaging the foreign relations. This comes as Khan's opposition PTI party has been carrying out an anti-government long march rally towards Islamabad to demand snap polls. The government has rejected the demand saying election will be held as scheduled later next year. More on news from Pakistan. Even though Defence Minister Khwaja Asif on Wednesday attempted to downplay the debate on a leaked proposal to amend the Pakistan Army Act, the revelation has laid bare the ongoing behind-the-scenes power struggle ahead of impending appointment of a new army chief. PTI chief Imran Khan has said that his party is sitting back and watching as the government decides who will be the next army chief. Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Mohammad Asif said on Wednesday that the government was not considering making major changes to the Pakistan Army Act PAA 1952. His remarks came in response to media reports that the new amendments were aimed at empowering Prime Minister to retain an incumbent army chief with a simple notification rather than through a complex constitutional process that also requires the President's assent. This comes as the army is all set to see a change of command with Chief of Army Staff General Kamal Javed Bajwa retiring this month. The ruling party has decided that the senior most military official whose name will be at the top of the list sent to Prime Minister would be appointed for the coveted slot. Meanwhile, opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan on Wednesday said that his party is sitting back and watching as the government appoints the next army chief. Khan said ruling PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif wants to appoint an army chief who will protect his interests. The office of chief of army staff has held importance for a very long time making the appointment an important issue for political parties. The military has directly ruled the country for almost half of Pakistan's nearly 75-year history. Even during the civilian rule, it dominates security and foreign policy. Moving on. Though no country has so far recognized the Taliban regime, top diplomats and officials from more than 10 countries, including Russia, India, Pakistan and China, took part in the Moscow format, meeting Afghanistan on Wednesday. The conference discussed the current humanitarian crisis and the ongoing efforts to provide assistance to the war-torn country. Representatives and officials from more than 10 countries including Russia, India, Pakistan and China exchanged views on the Afghan situation in the Moscow format meeting on Afghanistan on Wednesday. Statements by the Russia and India's foreign ministry said the participants discussed issues related to Afghanistan including the current humanitarian situation and the ongoing efforts of various stakeholders to provide assistance intra-Afghan talks, formation of an inclusive and representative government, efforts to counter threats of terrorism and ensuring regional security. Russian envoy Zamir Kabulov said, In our opinion, the main responsibility for comprehensive solution to the Afghan economic issue rests with the collective West, which drove the country to the current deplorable state. While the Indian envoy J.P. Singh called for joint work to ensure that the voice of the Afghans is not lost, Pakistan's envoy Sadiq Khan called for urgent humanitarian support. The Chinese envoy slammed the United States for seizing seven billion U.S. dollars assets of Afghan Central Bank and suspending development aid. The Taliban's foreign ministry spokesperson Bilal Karimi in a statement said that such meetings in which there is no representative from Kabul are not effective. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. In news from Nepal, Nepal's President Vidya Devi Bhandari, in response to the show cause notice of the Supreme Court over the Citizenship Bill, has submitted that the government failed to follow due process before resending the legislation for authentication. While the President's office, he says, the move to hold the bill was under her line of duty, thousands of youth continue to remain stateless in absence of any law. 
In response to the show cause notice by Nepal's Supreme Court, Office of President Bidya Devi Bhandari has defended her decision to not sign the citizenship bill. The President's office said the bill was put on hold as the government failed to hold discussions or have consultations over the comments made by her office. The President has the right to keep the bill on hold as it fails to follow the due process, said the submission made by Attorney General. The single judge bench of Supreme Court had asked the President's office, Sheetal Nivas, to explain the President's decision after five different writ petitions were lost seeking Apex Court's intervention. The refusal of the President's authentication received widespread backlash, including by leaders of ruling coalition who termed her move unconstitutional. Nepal witnessed street protest over the intentional delay made by President Bhandari in September as youth cited refusal to sign the bill will darken their future. The bill which became point of contention between Sheetal Nivas and the government was cleared twice by parliament. If the bill is authenticated in its current form, it will provide citizenship to thousands of youths who are deprived of citizenship and voting rights due to absence of any law. With the excitement of the FIFA World Cup, which is just around the corner, residents in Dhaka city of Bangladesh were seen hitting the streets to stock up on supporters' merchandise for the global soccer tournament. The tournament starts on November 20 with host Qatar taking on Ecuador. World Cup fever is starting to grip the South Asian nation of Bangladesh with locals hitting the streets of capital city Dhaka to stock up on supporters' merchandise for the global soccer tournament. Argentina and Brazil appear to be the most popular teams with plenty of shirts on sale from vendors and big flags proudly flying on rooftops over the city. People were seen buying Brazil jerseys for their family and while a man was seen hoping Lionel Messi could lead Argentina to victory in Doha. Bangladesh is traditionally cricket territory, but every four years the country goes World Cup crazy, giving boost to the sale of sportswear and merchandise in Bangladesh. Bangladesh <laughs> কারণ এইখানে আর্জেন্টিনা আর ব্রাজিলের সাপোর্টার বেশি তবে সবচেয়ে বেশি সাপোর্টার পাবেন আপনি আর্জেন্টিনা আর আর্জেন্টিনা আপনি দেখবেন প্রত্যেকটা ছাদের মধ্যে এত পরিমাণ পতাকা উত্তোলন হয়েছে আসলে আমরা খুবই এনজয় করি এই জিনিসটাকে আর আমরা আনন্দিত যে ফুটবল বিশ্বকে সাপোর্ট করে আর আমি ব্যক্তিগতভাবে আর্জেন্টিনা সাপোর্ট আর্টিস্টস ওয়ার অলসো পুটিং দি ফিনিশিং টাচেস টু সাম মিউরালস अराउंड দ্য সিটি পেইন্টিং দি লাইকস অফ মেসি ব্রাজিলিয়ান ফরওয়ার্ড নেমার এন্ড ক্রোশিয়া ক্যাপ্টেন লুকা মডরিক the tournament starts on November 20 with hosts Qatar taking on Ecuador. Scores of art lovers visited a traditional exhibition of clay tiles organized in Srinagar city this week in honor of Ghulam Muhammad Kumar, possibly the last craftsman of the art in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The art which was once part of the Kashmiri culture now has just a single craftsman practicing it. Take a look. The traditional art of making clay tiles made a comeback in India's Jammu and Kashmir through an exhibition organized in honor of Gulam Muhammad Kumar, possibly the last master craftsman of clay tiles known as Khanyari tiles. Zoya Khan, an architect by profession, organized the event with the support of the local authorities at the Government Arts Emporium in Srinagar, describing the purpose of the exhibition as to revive the dying art. The exhibition received good response from art lovers and students who got the chance to witness the traditional art of Kashmir. Zoya said with help of Department of Handicraft, she approached few artists who had knowledge of this art from whom she received the clay tiles, which were displayed during the exhibition. So this exhibition is a starting point, you know, because if you look at many people in front of you, and when you see that these things are possible, so I think उनके उनमें भी एक interest जागेगा जिसकी वजह से वो ये कर सकते हैं जैसे मैं अपने बारे में बताऊंगी I'm an architect by profession तो मैंने actually आज इस आपसे सीखी ये tiles कैसे बनानी है और उसके बाद मैंने दिल्ली में भी जाके advanced glazing course किया and जैसे आपने यहाँ देखा होगा एक और लड़का है उमर so we are from different backgrounds but हमने we have tried to re-establish a link with the past so in past clay tiles were used in houses but only a limited people could afford them. These tiles were also used in some historical and religious places. But with modernization, people changed their lifestyle and started using marbles. 
This is one of the reasons why clay tiles lost their glory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.